what's going on guys, Jared here. Today I'm bringing to you a deck profile for what I just used at today's Remote Duel Regional. I wanna preface this by saying I did not do great. I like definitely did not do great. I made it to like round five or six, I think, and I was X2. Um, but the uh, I've lost for separate reasons, I'll explain it a little bit, a lot of really bad hands. Um, but uh, so I wanna talk about a old concept in Yu-Gi-Oh that I was trying out and now, you know, obviously currently, with uh, smoke screening. A lot of people, newer players, might not know what that is, but the older players probably definitely do. So what smoke screening is, essentially, is you play one deck, um, and then you can pretty much side into a completely different strategy to mess up your opponent's side deck patterns. And through most of Yu-Gi-Oh, I would say in recent, probably within the last like five years, um, you really haven't been able to even try to do it because either engines are too big, the other cards in your deck um, don't work the same way uh, as you want. You would want them to for uh, the other engine. So you have to really, really select uh, like strategies that are also small, right? Like extra deck is a big thing. You know, you're combining two decks. Uh, it's very, very hard. Um, and you also lack uh, a lot of side deck, right? So um, you don't have a lot of side deck to be able to switch your strategies in case you go against a your rogue option or you go against a back row deck. You need you like I'm not going to be able to have like cosmic cyclone in my side deck because it's 15 cards of a separate deck. Um, but with that being said, um, I did just get back from vacation and I wanted to try out the new Tempai cards. So this is how I decided to do it, and I think it's a pretty good way of doing it because of how people are treating this deck as of now. I'm sure this is going to change in the future as the format develops more. But for now, this is how Tempai is being treated. Um, lastly, do not judge me on the ratios because I am missing cards. Uh, I did not get everything at the uh, premiere event that I was able to attend. So I am definitely missing cards for the deck and the ratios can definitely be switched around for this. But I think overall, it is pr I, the idea definitely worked the way I wanted it to. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the deck profile and please subscribe if you enjoy. Okay guys, so I actually decided to lay out my deck completely for this video because I think this is a better way of looking at everything all together. So in this, I actually have my full side, extra, and main deck out. Can you decide where the side and extra end or the main deck ends? Pretty difficult, I would say. Um, so what I was doing for my main deck specifically was I was actually going with Tempai. And the reason I was going with Tempai was because I want to go, one, I want to go second. So you pretty much win every die roll going uh, in the beginning, right? Game one, you ideally, you, let's say you lose the die roll, they go first, they do whatever. Um, you are able to crack their board, OTK them, um, or black rose the board and then just like outgrind them. They both work. Um, and then, yeah, you could just do anything from there. And then you, sometimes you can like Fenrir grind out the game. And then game two, what your opponent is now thinking is, oh, I am against Tempai Dragon. Um, I need to switch up my strategy to be able to beat this deck and maybe OTK them on the crackback. So they are going to make me go first now because they think that um, I am playing Tempai and I cannot be able to uh, do anything on my turn one. Well, when they make me go first, all of a sudden I go normal summon Centurion Primera and they're like, wait a minute, I am sitting on all these cards that are meant for like all engine and being able to OTK when I cannot do it anymore because the next thing coming out is a Calamity Lock that is going to end the game immediately there too. So you're essentially playing like a double cheese strategy that is meant like messing up your opponent's mind game and how they're thinking about the game. Um, and you can really take advantage of that. So the nice thing about both these engines is they're very confined, they're very small, and you're able to fit them both into one deck, which I think is very, very funny. So for the actual main deck, I'll just actually start here. I have two green, three red, and I only had two yellow. I'm missing one yellow. So if you have another one, play it. Um, I could not play it you would cut probably Druid Swarm. That would be my suggestion. Um, that was what I was going to cut if I got the third one, which I did not. Um, I played three of the Field Spell, three of the Quick Play Spell, one Druid, one Magnemon. Um, here is my 15 Tempai cards. That was what we were using to swap out for the other engine, which is Centurion. Um, but we need cards that now complement both Centurion, Centurion and Tempai, right? We need cards that do both of those things justice and to be able to play. So what are the best things for that? Well, first of all, let's start with hand traps. We played 15. 15 hand traps, I think, is like the um, the correct number for most formats, I would say, just because you draw two on average, roughly. Um, so it's pretty good. I like two. These hand traps are performed well, some like some better than others in certain matchups. It's, you know, it's back and forth. Um, and then, of course, we have prosperity. Um, the funny thing about prosperity in a list like this is if you look below me at the extra deck, we have 
six Tempai cards, and then we have obviously more than six Centurion cards, but if you're playing the Tempai deck, you just banish the Centurion cards, and if you're playing the Centurion deck, you banish the Tempai cards, and the Plot of Prosperity is like, you know, basically free, because you're never going to use each other's cards. Very, It's extremely rare that that's ever going to come up. Um, so you are able to, Prosperity feels amazing in this deck. Now, what else we can use? Uh, what I decided to go for was because we are definitely playing a going second board strategy going first. We want to weaken their board, and then maybe we can punish it with a Tempai, or we can punish it with something like Fenrir's. Um, I'm only playing two Fenrir because I wanted to play Wraith Soth in my deck so I could play set rotation. I wanted to be able to have more access to stand up and to the Sang and Summoning because they're all one card starters to be able to get all the both engines going along with terraforming. And this also helps breaking boards. Of course, I won games like strictly off Fenrir and non-engines back. It was crazy because they're like throwing their non-engine at my real engine and Fenrir is just sitting here and just like popping a card, banishing a card, banishing a card, banishing a card, and it just takes off. It can take over a game. Um, one Talents, one Call by the Grave. I, there are one of I did not draw them enough to really put an opinion on them. These could also probably be swapped out if you wanted to, maybe more hand traps or what, something else. Uh, maybe third Fenrir, anything else you could really do. Um, now, for the side deck, as you can see, we have three Primera, three Trudea, one Phalanx, one Wake Up, one Emeth, three Oath, and three Stand Up. So the funny thing about this is, obviously, it is these 15 for these 15. That was, that was the swap so that you are able to mess up your opponents. Uh, a lot of the times, even if I lost with the Tempai deck, I would still swap into the Centurion deck because they would assume that they are going to go first um, still, and then they are playing like things like Judgment and Traps and uh, all these like nonsense cards that don't do anything, and then it's just more free for me to Calamity Lock you. And this is so consistent, too. You have like a, still like a million starters. It's like these, these, uh, all these, like essentially besides these. You have like over 15 starters. It's ridiculous. So you are more than likely going to be able to still get to the Calamity Lock uh, combo. Especially, I was also Shiftered at this event, too. Both of these decks now do not care about Shifter, which is very funny. They, they, they Okay, I'm using that very, very loosely. They do care about Shifter. It is just not to the extent of something like fire or like a really detrimental to them. Uh, they can still kind of do stuff. Um, and that's all we needed to do. Um, especially Centurion. Centurion can, uh, calamity under shifter, which is very fun, fun. Um, but yeah, so that is it for the Centurions. As you can see, I am playing the trap now to go along with the spell. Um, this is broken. This card won me a game before, uh, wake up makes your opponent really consider a lot of their hand trap options. And it makes a lot of trees a lot better. Um, for the extra deck, as you can see, like I said before, I had two, uh, one seal, one striker, one uh, two of the level seven synchro, one of the level 10 synchro, and one black rose dragon. Black rose was broken. That was like probably my MVP of the tenpai package. I feel like I was making it like every other game. Um, as you can see, I do not have Trident Dragion. Um, I am not paying that enormous price tag for a deck that I do not even think is that great. Um, so I'm just not doing that. But it is something that should be in here. If you have it, play it, I 100%. Um, you could definitely make room for it. Um, so yeah, I definitely would have that in here um, along with the third of the Pedro. Those are the two cards I really missed um, that I did not have. But I really don't think you need a lot more than this. Oh, Moonrose as well. Moonrose is another card that I wish I had that I did not. It did not actually come up at the event, luckily, thank God. But um, it's really important. Uh, if you have a Moon, you definitely need Moonrose for this deck. So there's like two extra cards that you need to be able to play in here. Um, then I have Little Knight for the generic uh, link that we are playing. So we were able to make Little Knight with Striker Dragon uh, with any of the Tempies so that we can get the Banish effect. Then we can also make Little Knight with Artemis over here on the Centurion side off of Primera to be able to still get the Banish effect. Both of these cards came up today and I liked both of them. Um, do they have to be there? Probably not, but they are definitely decent. Um, for the rest of the Centurion, new Auxilia, uh, very, very strong card. Uh, I, I still am mind blown how cheap this card is because I think the Centurion engine is so terrifying in so many different ways. Um, I played one copy of Legatia. I think it is debatable to play a second copy over the second copy of Auxilia, but I don't know. That requires more testing because there was actually a couple times where I had a lot of Centurion engine and I opened up with Legatia and then I was able to make a second Legatia on their turn as an interruption, but I couldn't do it because I started with it. So there is definitely times where I wish I had uh, another Legatia. So that's also something that you can uh, question and test around with. Then of course we have the normal cards, Crimson Dragon, Blazar Dragon, uh, Calamities. I have two Calamities in here this time. So this is actually something that me and Nick were talking about before, which is uh, a lot of the scarier decks that can able to set back row with quick play spells and stuff. So you want to be able to try to Calamity them again on your own turn 
to be able to OTK them. And if you can't do that, and if it's too dangerous, if you're fearing something like Nib uh, or Super Poly or anything like that, um, you could just set up Calamity again and just Calamity their turn again. And if you you better kill them after two turns, um, they should be uh, OTKable at that point. It definitely should be OTK because they should have taken damage on the previous turn as well. So if you take like if you could chunk half, you should easily be able to do the other half after a second Calamity. Um, so yeah, that is it for the extra deck. Again, this is a strategy that I have not seen in a very long time. This is a very old school strategy that we used to do back in the day for side decking patterns where cards were a lot more generic, where trap cards are probably still like generic trap cards are probably still used and things of that nature. But now we have hand traps. So that kind of subsidizes that and uh, be able to do that. It's like these slots, I think, are the hard ones to decide of how you want to uh, use them. Uh, Droplet was also in consideration as a card. More hand traps are in consideration, more talents, thrust. Uh, all these cards, I think, were in good consideration, but I did not uh, play any of them. So um, that is going to do it. When we know what you guys think about smoke screening in Yu-Gi-Oh, this is, again, this is a strategy that is very, very unique, and not a lot of people do it, but it can come up every once in a while. And I think with Tenpai, we finally have a going second deck that is able to do it, um, I would say, respectively. So, uh, yeah, uh, that is going to do it for the deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe if you did. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.